Yeah, I would love to hear from from all of you, and we can start with Kevin. You know, we all have a presence on social media. You know, we're all also designers. That's our profession, and I would love to hear um, some people say say things like, you know, you know, our social media could be the content could be all design, but then something happens like like what we've noticed in the last two weeks with protesting and you know the the um, you know the unfortunate death of someone. In, um, in the hands of someone in power. And, and so we use our social media to, to protest and we, and we put things, we, we put things about social injustice um, and uh, we get political. And, and some people might say, you know, um, you as a designer shouldn't get political because it's bad for business. What do you guys think about that? Oh, happy to, happy to start. I, um, I think when I look, when I think of, my 20 plus year weird career path. What I am proud to say is that I feel like, and I'm making the conscious choice, right? I had to start my own company to make this choice. And I, I wanna bring my full human self to the equation, right? And apply that to needs that are actually, you know, emerging in the market. We're, we're in a society that is shifting the value criteria of what our, what our Customers think about our audiences think about it's constantly shifting. We've seen so much change and that would have taken years in the last handful of days, right? And when I look at how um, institutions, enterprises have been able to respond to some of those things or continue to allow certain systemic issues to continue to play out the way that they have, leaving huge demographics of people out, leaving them out or exploiting or disenfranchising, like there's tons of human need to be solved for and and i almost feel like design has helped empower me to be a you know a servant leader slash advocate to be able to affect change like i i've come i'm coming from a you know a personal story where there was pain descended of slavery um the 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 overt encounters that have happened to generations before me my family and my parents and, and myself and then how that translates to covert experiences inside you know, academia and the places that I've worked, right? These, these things are real. And I want to bring my full human self because I think these things not only inhibit my own personal safety and experiences, but when I look at managing a business and helping other businesses get, be successful, the notion of relevance is super important. If, you're, if your leadership team, if your boards, if your VCs, if your investors, if your teams don't mirror the world, you're going to quickly become irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't be complacent. You always have to, you know, be willing to adopt new um, new approaches, new people with new sensitivities from different cultures, perspectives, racial uh, understanding, right? Uh, because it all translates to how, how do we serve our fellow human being with empathy and compassion? We have to understand. We have to mirror what we're serving. Yeah, I can go off of that. I feel like this is not even a political issue, but being killed by police is a human rights issue. Like a political can be like, oh, how much should we tax the rich? Or how much should we tax this middle class? Or should we cancel student loans? That, that Maybe that's political, but I feel like this is not. And just to echo Kevin, like, you know, you have to be relevant by representing the culture and what's happening right now. Like, I feel like the brands that resonate the most, they are in tune with the culture. And for me as a young person, I'm 28 i'll be 29 in a week i feel like black people lead the culture like that's just how it goes like <laughs> and if we're not looking at that if we're not following that and being relevant and relating to that then what's the point like what are you doing especially as sports companies you know we have um athletes and like i feel like sports just overcome like a lot of barriers whether it's like sexual identity location age anything like just having that common goal is why sports are just so sacred to me and why i love it so much and why i'm in that industry and i feel like if we don't use our voice our brand or whatever platform it is to continue to reinforce that common goal that we're all human we all deserve this we all deserve the opportunity we all deserve this and that <clears throat> and just using that to like find equity not equality but equity <laughs> then I think we're doing ourselves a disservice and design really has power. And I feel like for me, when it comes to social media, like I have my own personal page and you'll see that it's a bunch of activism stuff for my daughter. And then I have like, I guess my brand page that I kind of barely pay attention to. Um, 
maybe I should a little bit more, but I just feel like social media is just a powerful tool. And if we don't design to help people, then what are we designing for? I mean, you know, it's interesting. Oh, sorry. I just think, what's the point? <laughs> it's, it's been an interesting journey for me. Um, started with this little experiment of teaching people online, which turned into <laughs> a really big thing, you know, 300,000 on Facebook, 60 to 70 K on, on Instagram and a hundred something on YouTube. And the reason I, I mention that is just to share the, the weight on my mind sometimes where something may happen personally. And there, there's times where I've, I've kind of reached that, that divide, you know, like Jasmine talked about having personal and, and uh, professional um, fronts. There's times when I've done that. Um, but this, I, for the, for the most part, I've tried to avoid um, being political at all because to me it's always been about the design but this week I felt like the issue isn't even political like you said um, you know it's about decency and you know again this theme of past present future the past uh, certainly influenced I think the history of design right if there was if there were equal opportunity in the past if my people weren't subjugated for hundreds of years if we weren't taught to be subservient to white masters overtly and covertly through different uh, mechanisms and schema in society like these things are uh, interlaced and woven in society chances are Dieter Rams could have been rolling with some some uh, black dude and you know they came up with stuff and here we go and then I wouldn't have any issue with it but it's it's been interesting questioning these these principles for example again um going huh you know is, is this really me and, and how do I now weave my voice and my culture into the things I do. Um, so anyway, back to your question. Um, I, I decided I had to say something. I just had to speak up. And I did, I tried to do it in a way that, um, you know, again, focused on not the political left or right, um, but more so right or wrong. And, you know, is this something we're willing to just accept? And at the same time, even though we all have platforms and we have this reach, I didn't feel like additional steps, you know, diversity was mentioned earlier and inclusion. Okay. So as a design community with platforms and reach, what are we doing to include uh, these diverse voices? You know, um, I don't know if any of you are on any boards that are influ influential within the industrial design community. I'm not personally. Um, and I, I, I struggled. I mean, when we were getting this discussion together, I was talking with Hector. I'm like, Huh, who are some black industrial designers we can you know, get on here? And we were kind of just struggling to think because we're not really necessarily at the forefront um, in these circles a lot of times. Um, and so I think, I think a push for inclusion would be helpful as a next step. Um, we've spoken up, so what's next? You know, what do we do? Um, you know, do you go protest? Some, I've seen friends go do that. That's cool. Um, write your reps. That's something you can do. Um, call people out. You know, take the Seth Rogen approach is what I'm calling it um to stamp out razor racism oh, or anything oh, like oh. no tolerance <laughs> it's like anyhow uh, you can you can go look at his page if you want to see that but um i think i think the next step for me is okay how even even myself as a minority how can i include people that are maybe have questions about design um that look like me or, or don't look like these you know the mainstream uh white uh, eurocentric designer yep no, just a, a quick add, um, and th this is just scratching the surface. There's so much needed, clearly, from this conversation. But an uh, event that we held last week, just for people's FYI, and it's inclusive of industrial design, strategic design, UX. There's an organization called the Design Management Institute. If you go to dmi.org, I'm the board chair of that um, design society, if you will. It's a nonprofit. But we, the, pr the president of DMI actually is a black woman, Carol Bilson who was doing a lot of the design thinking, strategic design notions that uh, people talk about today. She was doing that as a, as a first black design executive 10, 15, 20 years ago um, at very prominent you know, enterprises. So uh, DMI is led by Carol and uh, you know, we have you know, a diverse collective that we're, we're coming together. We just started this annual series of, of diversity and inclusion by design conferences where we try to have at least a conversation. It's just beginning stages. Uh, but it's just one example of these emerging uh, conversations. And I have an ad as well. I just feel like 
if you're a company or a person or a brand and you monetize off a certain culture, you should be invested in that culture's problems as well as their victories and their celebrations. I mean, at Under Armour, we have um, like lots of things we call moments that matter. So we have pride product lines. So we'll have shirts that are really celebrating the LGBTQ community. And we have International Women's Day. We'll do that throughout all of our products. We even have Black History Month. So we'll do that throughout shoes, t-shirts, whatever it is. Like we, we monetize off these moments. And if we're going to do that, then we should be invested in those same groups that have issues that are like dire to them. So I feel like at this moment, it's not about being political. It's about being invested in our consumer and the same things that we want to monetize off every single day. Um, and that's just really important to me. So we have Black History Month. So now that needs to be Black Lives Matter. 